everyone, welcome back to another Facebook Live episode. This is a bit of a special event for us. We're at the local uh, track, Grand Junction Motor Speedway. It's a super nice track for setting up suspension and doing brakes testing, which we're doing on the latest uh, V8 conversion that happens to be in an exoset. Um, just to hit some highlights, if uh, we have some new viewers, the V8 conversions that we do offer the GM LS3. This is an E-Rod that's right around 430 horse. Uh, we made that to a T56 Magnum, six speed. And then the rear end is out of a CTSV Cadillac ditch rack. Uh, starting at the front, we did some custom brackets uh, in-house from our CAD engineers to mount the lights a little bit easier and uh, tidier than just uh, clamp on brackets. Those are some Dominator 2 headlights. I believe they're all actually off of the motorcycle. And the uh, mirrors are the same way. Uh, some nice Sparco seats you see there. Uh, the wheels and tires, the customer picked those out. Um, nice, I believe they're about 10 or 10 and a half inches wide. Uh, right around a zero offset. And those are the widest street tires we can put on those. So. I'm assuming that he'll probably go to a full Hoosier tire once he gets this uh, back home in his own state. Uh, we had to do a custom exhaust for it. We had a local shop do that for us. We have to come around to this other side, back into the sun a little bit. Uh, another CAD design. Um, because this customer has a, um, a race fuel cell, we weren't able to do the fuel fill right off of the trunk. So we're able to come up here um, with the fuel safe filler neck <clears throat> to help that situation out. Let's see, that's pretty much the car in an overview. We have our Fox suspension on there that's working really nicely. Um, we loosened up, loosened up the damping just a little bit. The track, uh, because it, it's a lightweight car and the track's a little bit rough in a couple spots, so we'll probably be messing around with that, tightening up as we continue on. So I think right now, are we ready to go take a loop around and see how this thing works out? So Brandon, co co uh, co-worker, uh, our engineer in-house is going to be our pilot, and uh, hoping to keep it on the dirty side down and uh, in between the lines. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs>
saw it. Uh, the camera was a little bit angry going around the corners and such, so hopefully you didn't get all the uh, something's wrong on your guys' end. Uh, Brandon, you have any comments on how it uh, was feeling across the track? No, oh, it's a sweetheart. Um, it's really, really well behaved. Lots of thrust, as you would expect, um, and really sticky in the corners. Uh, the tires were brand new when we came out, so they were not sticky to start off. But question: yep. um, They want to know if the wine is the fuel pump. The wine is the fans. Are the fans? So the fans are on right now. You know, obviously, just uh, running it out a little bit. So, uh, but no, it's. It's really well balanced. Uh, you know, there's definitely some still still some polishing to be done, uh, but it's well balanced. It's easy to drive. You've got to pay attention. The right pedal works really, really well. <laughs> uh, but no, and the brakes are actually phenomenal as well. I was braking way, way, way early. This isn't my car. This we're not trying to prove anything here. We're just shaking down a customer's car. But you could tell that I could probably shorten the distance by half at I'm least. I'm glad you didn't because the camera would probably be on the hood at that yeah. time. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I was having exactly. a bit of a hard time hanging on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would believe it. <laughs> but no, it's it's a sweetheart. And, I mean, it's easy to drive. You could go get groceries in it. I don't know where you put them. <laughs> in my <but> lap. Yes. <laughs> uh, I didn't cover, I think the weights were about, what, 1750, 1780? 1745, yeah. There you go. Yep, 1745 and 59% front. So pretty good power to weight ratio there. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what the numbers are. Not that good with math to do it <laughs> off my head like that, but uh, really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's the short version. Well, I don't think you need another power adder on top of the, the, the crate engine that's off of there. So. No, and I tell you what, we did uh, supercharge one of these, and it was much the same. It was an absolute sweetheart, but it was actually kind of hard to keep the tires underneath that one. It was really, really, really well behaved when it let loose. There was nothing unexpected or scary about it, but you really had to be careful with it. With this one, yeah, you still gotta pay attention, but it's much easier to actually go full throttle and it looks nice. So. It's not trying to kill you. No, it's not trying to kill you, exactly. That's always nice on things that you purchase. So. Yes, <laughs> that is a goal we have here. <laughs> <laughs> have any more questions for us? I don't see any official questions, but do you guys maybe want to touch on a couple of the major differences between this and a standard Exoset build real fast? Sure. So, um, I guess it depends on what you define as standard. Uh, the most obvious thing people have probably already figured out, uh, yeah, we'll make it quiet now, uh, is the engine, obviously. Uh, so the entire drivetrain is new. Um, otherwise, Exoset builds are pretty much to whatever the customer wants. So these brakes would be overkill on a four cylinder car. Um, our little big brake kit would be fantastic. That's what we had on our XS set. Uh, the tires are probably a little bit bigger than normal. Um, the Fox suspension works really, really well. Um, you don't have to spend that much money to get a good suspension, but if you want the best suspension, that's the way to go. Um, but yeah, basically, I guess the short version is drivetrain and customer preferences. Yeah, the, what you see here besides a little bit of header there, it would be the same, typically the same thing on a, a Miata build, so mm. drivetrain wise. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, someone wants to know, Patrick wants to know, will the long tube headers from the V8 Roadsters fit with this kit? That is a good question. I know they were pretty challenging to fit into a Miata. Um, and while. Well, yeah, yeah. While, and I don't know if you have any more information on this than I do, Matt, that it, basically my understanding, there's a ton more room in some places with an exoset, but not in others. And while the tunnel is not super tight, it's not super big. So anything's possible with a welder and a grinder. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Obviously, I don't have a really good answer to that one. I would not necessarily expect them to fit as is, though. Untested on our end, for sure. Untested on our end, definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, if that's all we got, uh, we just want to say thank you for coming out. We got a field trip, so that's always great on our end. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments, and we'll get to those at a later date. Ah, next week will be our original time Thursday. I think we're at 2 o'clock, so please join us at that time. Thank you very much. See ya.
one you want to get one last question real fast sure yeah that's... i was just kidding about that Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course somebody wants burnouts oh uh, yeah but, we uh, do too <laughs> bring us yeah. some tires though <laughs> <laughs> so someone uh dan wants to know how the exoset would compare to other quote track cars such as the Arium, Adam, Caterham, and the Radical RXC. Wow. And I don't... So, um, I actually used to have a, a 7, a low cost, um, with an R1 engine in it. So it was, despite how light this thing is, it was not quite 800 pounds lighter than it. Um, you know, it kind of follows that instead of 400 horsepower, it had 120, I think. <laughs> and probably 12 pound feet of torque is my guess. Um, <laughs> Similar, similar in terms of all the grip in the world, absolute riot to drive, lots of fun. Uh, dissimilar in terms of this thing just goes at any point. Um, I, I did the whole, basically the whole lap or two laps in third gear because there was just no reason to shift because there's all the torque everywhere. Um, so this is a much more substantial car. Um, this is going to punch its way through the air much better. Um, the, so you know, pros and cons to both as, as ever. Uh, the Radical, honestly, I have no experience with. Um, the Radical is going to be a much more track focused, uh, lots of aero work. Um, the Exocet is a phenomenal car, but it is not a very aerodynamic car. Um, we have employed the sledgehammer technique to aerodynamics here. <laughs> Uh, the Ariel Adam, I don't have any experience with, um, they're, they're actually for roughly the same price as this car. You could have a 180, 220, I don't know, lower horsepower, uh, Adam, um, True. this is, I believe going to be a much stiffer chassis. Um, it's dramatically more economical to build. Uh, I, don't think you can do an atom on your own i'm not sure um so atoms are awesome as well um i'm biased i prefer this but i don't to be fair i don't have any seat time in atoms so and i'll stop rambling now <laughs> <laughs> any other questions okay thursday two o'clock we'll see you there thanks for visiting have a good night